know where that came from. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Your favorite intro. Access memory back. Circuit activated. We are controlling transmission. Leave now before the exits are sealed. Our mission is about to begin. So please, fasten your seatbelts and prepare for takeoff. Yo, yeah, I know what time it is. Welcome to Kiss My Keister. Another night, another hour of fun, laughter, hilarity, and the kids. I'm joined by Nicole Lopez and Joe Riggio. Hi, Katie. Hold on one second. I think we lost you. You were in the midst of talking. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Is it? Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. No, you didn't do anything. It just went out. Oh, so what do you want to do? You want to start the intro over? Okay. Good, we get to dance again. But I'm not dancing in front of that camera again. You already got it. What was what you had? Just go pick it up. From the intro? Two, three. (laughs) (laughs) Just Just start with... Hey, welcome again. Welcome back to another episode of Kiss My Keister here at the uh, Center of the Arts and Humanities building in sunny Sarasota, Florida. I am joined by my co host the kids, as I like to refer to them, Nicole Lopez and Joe Reggio. Say hello, guys. Thank you, Mama Kate. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Mommy. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, this is going to be a very interesting Kiss My Keister for this time around. We have some lovely, lovely topics that we have gotten from you, the listeners, which we love so much. So basically, at this point, we now have uh, a good listenership, which is awesome. I love hearing from everyone, but still 2021, we can build it up even more. So like, share, follow, and promote us because we want to get your Keister moments as well. So the two topics we're going to talk about today, ladies, is going to be about health insurance, and uh, we, we're going to talk about a little bit about kids and pets, something in there. So th- these are some fun moments that we're going to have some great times with, don't you agree? Well, yeah, I think so, because after being a pet sitter for so many years, I got to see a lot of things where pets were involved. So, uh, you know, one of my favorite sayings was always that it was harder to train the pet parent than it was to train the pet. The pet gets it. Give me a treat. I'll do whatever you want. Pet parents. But we did it this way back then. Or is that really necessary? And I'm thinking, well, it depends. Do you want your dog to continue biting your neighbors? Or, you know, how do you want to fix this problem? And I have a few, three little uh, snot factories, so <laughs> we're covered. Curtain climbers, <laughs> I love germ, germ, snot, yeah, snot factories, yeah, germ factories, crumb crunchers, crumb crunchers, Lego mines. There you go. This say. is this is just getting better and better. Do you all see how time. lucky you are not to have to deal with that? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so anyway. Let's, let's just go into it right now. One of the pet peeves that someone uh, has already admitted was basically we found high rising costs of pet or just insurance in general. doesn't matter. Like yeah, insurance costs. sucks. Uh, the frustration is not 
that insurance is bad. It's that it's hard to get. And then once you get it, you have to have barrels of money to draw from in order to pay for it. What starts out as $50 a month ends up being 200 because you didn't include this or you didn't include that or you didn't tell me you had this or, or whatever the situation. So every single time you talk to your agent, it's going up again. Or better yet, you have the insurance that you apply for, you pay for, and they don't make good on their promise. That I've had happen too. That's just not right. No, so it's really it's not a right. damned if you do and damned if you don't. Yeah, pretty much. Guess- My agent said, Well, you'll have to call the company about that. We don't handle that here. <laughs> I'm glad you're the insurance company. Uh huh. Well, guess what? That insurance company is no longer getting our money. Well, yeah, that's that's the big thing that a lot of people have had with health insurance as a whole, in a sense, is just the rising cost, the the faltering factors, the dropping of insurance with health conditions, all these little things, which has now pushed all these insurance companies away. And now you only have certain ones that are not fighting for your business now. And now we're limited and being screwed on the back half. Yeah, it's not a very fair situation. Now, I, I mean, I tried to find a doctor that took my insurance. And and I know, Joe, you've had the same problem. Oh, I so, did. <laughs> yeah, so you can relate. Um, I'm a new patient. I call my insurance company because I find out that the doctor that I've had for the last two years, their office doesn't take this level of insurance. It's the same company. Nothing there's, changed. There's levels. Except the level. So now they don't take that level, so they had to send me to another doctor. Okay, nobody answered the phone. First off, I had to leave a message. Two days it took for them to get back to me. And she says, well, I just can't seem to find you anywhere. And I said, well, could it possibly be because I'm a new patient? Oh, well, then you'll have to fill out the paperwork. Her whole demeanor changed. As soon as she found out I was a new patient and she was wasting her time looking up my name, <laughs> I immediately became, oh, a new patient. Well, you'll have to fill the paperwork out online. Just call us back and I'll send you a link. That's mm-hmm. great. And I thought, yeah, that's a doctor I want to go see. So I would say, you know, earlier I was trying to say that I didn't really have too much experience when it comes to the insurance Because mostly I have always been covered either by the military or through the VA. However, I did forget that my children have the Medicaid. And I'm going to tell you what, that in itself pisses me off. My daughter has had her braces for over three years now. First of all, for like the first six months, they just put brackets right here. Well, yeah, and then they crank no. them every so often. No, no, often. no, no, no. <laughs> no I, I had braces. I know how this should actually go. They just put bra- <laughs> they just put brackets on the front teeth. There are no back brackets to help pull the teeth straight. They just put those on. She was like that for six months. Oh my god! And now the dentist. What happens? Or I'm sorry, the orthodontist will trying to make an appointment oh we're only here on mondays from one to three on <laughs> these dates certain days of the month mm-hmm. yep i can appreciate can that. i go anywhere else no nope, not unless i want to go to tampa that's right and because that's an nowhere, hour away nowhere else is that insurance taken i have to go exactly where they tell me to go mm-hmm. unless i want to pay about five grand for yeah. this. Well, what Katie was saying earlier was like the different levels. Most people don't realize that there's like HMO, HMO Blue, all these different levels. And those are your levels that you go oh, in. Oh, yeah. Depending. yeah. I got stuck uh. with a PPO when I used to have an HMO. And I have no understanding as to why it even got changed for that matter. But now here we are. I'm trying to pull this off. And I got to figure out what I'm supposed to do next. You have yeah. HBO too, <laughs> and Cinemax and Showtime and Stars. No, I don't have any of those. I have Netflix. <laughs> uh, well, I have to say, um, 
the whole limitation of where you can go, the whole levels and everything. I totally agree. Just like Katie said, there, my horrible experience and this is my pet peeve is I just went through the healthcare.gov. Everyone loves it. We're just going to say that, but wasted a lot of time trying to get affordable assurance, which I did. And basically I was told to log on their website. I'll find a doctor. Hey, that's great. I went to a doctor. I had this little short list of doctors that were in the area. I started calling them all. Here it is. One that said it was family practice. I called them. No, we're OBGYN. Okay. I called another one that was family practice. <laughs> oh, we don't accept that insurance anymore. Mm-hmm. But you're on their list. Yep. Nope. Then I called another one. They're like, oh, no, we're pediatrics. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but it says your family practice on the list. Nope. So they're not putting the, the it's listings. not up to date. No, it's because not. Because I did the exact same thing for my daughter. Yeah. And it was frustrating as hell. Thanks, guys. I have to do this. I am not looking forward to it. Give me the list of the doctors that don't answer or they're wrong so I can just alleviate those before I even begin. Oh, well, see, that that was... I actually found a family practice doctor that's not too far away from my house. But the thing is, they were unable to see me until March. And I'm like, no, I need to see you now for uh, an, like a wound on my arm. They're like, well, it wouldn't be until March, but... If you want, you can go to the walk-in clinic that's in our in-house network that's right here. And I said, that's great. So I went to the in-house clinic. Okay, got that. Was all done. And I'm like sitting here, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And I just went to go see them again for a follow-up, and I have to go see one more follow-up. But I'm just sitting here, I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm thinking about going to the emergency room for my earache. When When the nurse's assistant or doctor's assistant, whoever it was, called me back, when she thought... I was already a patient. She was going to get me in on Friday because of the pain. As soon as she found out that I was a new patient. You messed up, Katie. I did. I should have <laughs> just let her up. fight and try to find me. <clears throat> you should have. Say, I would have. That's why uh, well, I'm not allowed to make phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why we keep you off the phone. That is correct. <laughs> you really should. <laughs> no, I, I actually have another pet peeve on this, which really pissed me off with in health insurance and all this do other it, stuff. Do it, Joe. Do it. Yeah. It's, it's not at that moment, the release of Kate moment. But yeah, it's a release of Joe. But anyway, um, I want to say it was like two years ago, I had health insurance and it was through, um, I'm not going to name the company, but the company had a, a thing that was broadcast on the news saying they were uh, scamming people and Mm. taking people's monies from other accounts and double billing them and other people were getting dropped. Well, I was one of the people that got dropped. Hello. So with that, I didn't even realize I was dropped during this whole time. So they didn't, you know, they didn't bill me. They must've double billed someone else, whatever. And then next thing you know, I got dropped. Well, here it is. I went to a doctor's office, local, that everyone kept telling me to go to because it's the most prominent one to go. I went there. Funny story. (laughs) I have my medical records. All I want to do is drop them off and say I'm a new patient. Well, the person at the front desk said, Joe, you have to actually go fill out this paperwork, give it back to us, and you have to meet with the nurse. Why do I have to meet with the nurse? Well, it's just one of these things that we have to do as a new patient. I'm like, Is it going to cost me anything? Because if it's free, I'll do it. If not, I'm not paying for this. I'm just dropping off medical records. No, no, it's free. So they get the nurse. I sit in a room. The nurse, do you have high blood pressure? Do you have this? Do you have that? I'm like, no, no, no. Do you want to get on the scale? No, I don't want to scale. I don't want this. I just want to, you know, I'm getting high blood pressure now because you're asking me these questions. I just want to (laughs) drop, I just want to drop my paperwork off so I can go. So next thing you know, everything's said and done. I walk away. A couple months later, we find out about the scam and all this other stuff, and I'm calling my insurance company to find out something like, oh, you're no longer covered. I'm like, I'm not? So like, no. So then I'm trying to call up the doctor's office that I went to, and here they are saying, oh, well, you owe us $300. Yeah, you have an outstanding debt. And I said, why do I owe you $300? They're like, oh, because you had this thing. I'm like, no, I told you. I was there for medical records. I told you that that's all I wanted to do. You said I had to do the nurse's thing. And if I wanted to do the nurse's thing, it wouldn't cost me a dime. And the lady's like, well, that should have been said. I'm like, but that's what was said. So after going back and forth, complaining on both sides, we'll settle it for 150 So technically, I shouldn't even pay the 150 but I just did it to shut them up. But I sat there and said, I'm going to let you know right now. 
I'm a licensed realtor in the area and people ask me who I know. You are never going to be recommended by me. But you have a good day. Take care. Click. And there's I, the, yeah, I can't blame you. I, I probably wouldn't have been half that nice. There is the lesson learned. 